African countries' leaders have remained silent for decades. However, this has changed now. Standing right in the heart of the West, in New York, at the United Nations General Assembly, African leaders gave speeches that shook the very cores of the Western countries. Various leaders exposed France and the role of the United Nations as a lapdog and facilitator in exploiting African countries. Out of them, Mali's foreign minister, representing the military leader in Mali, said things nobody was expecting. Don't forget he was standing in the UN General Assembly, but he boldly said that France has sponsored terrorist groups in Africa so it can interfere by offering troops. He also revealed that Mali reported this to the UN. However, surprisingly, the UN literally did nothing. France stayed where it was and nobody questioned it. By saying this, Mali's foreign minister exposed what the UN is there for. What more did he say and make France ashamed at the UN before the rest of the world? Let's know about it. At the United Nations General Assembly session, Abdoulaye Diop, the Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Mali, condemned the interference of certain foreign powers, which, according to him, has perpetuated the criminal activities of terrorist groups in the area. Everybody knows who he was referring to. He made it clear that Mali's government had previously voiced concerns to the Security Council about France's actions on August 15, 2022. But these actions continued without repercussions, seemingly enjoying impunity due to France's status as a permanent council member. In other words, despite following a proper channel and complaining about France, the United Nations did nothing. France was even not asked a single question, despite every European country knowing how deeply involved France is in Africa. Therefore, Minister Diop expressed his disappointment that the international response to Mali's security challenges, despite a decade of presence, has not matched the severity of the threats. He highlighted that the expectations of the Malian people, as conveyed by national authorities, often went unheard. He further said that the United Nations multidimensional integrated stabilization mission in Mali, called MINUSMA, failed to contribute effectively to the restoration of national territorial control resulting in an exacerbation of the security situation that has now spread from the north to the south and central regions of Mali. Concerning MINUSMA, he criticized its role in fueling tensions between communities by allegedly utilizing human rights for political gains. This criticism formed the basis of the government's request for the mission's withdrawal in June 2023, with efforts underway to fulfill this request by December 31st, as per Security Council Resolution 2690. Minister Diop, also addressed the situation in Niger, condemning the imposition of sanctions and coercive measures, particularly highlighting the illegality and inhumanity of the ECOWAS sanctions. He said categorically that Mali opposes any potential military intervention by ECOWAS, warning of the potential dire consequences such actions could have for Niger and the wider region. Reflecting on past events, he criticized NATO's intervention in Libya in 2011, citing it as the primary cause of the proliferation of terrorism across the Sahel. He urged the international community to learn from the mistakes made in Libya and called for reforms in global economic, financial, and political governance to create fair conditions for Africa's participation in multilateral institutions. You see, his tone was saying it all. Mali is not in the mood to request or beg. Rather, from now on, it will only let the international world know of its plan and it will carry them out. Mali will no longer waste its time in the United Nations complaining about France, knowing that nothing will be done against France. Perhaps the West does not care about the image of the United Nations that is being tarnished badly. Every country in the world knows that if any Western country like France does something wrong against a developing country, France will get away with it without facing any consequences. That's the trust deficit which will cost the UN dearly. Earlier that was a curtain, an illusion, that the United Nations is really an international body that could make countries comply with international law. However, after what France has done in Africa for years and the United Nations' ignorance of everything, it has become clear that no developing and weak country should expect from the United Nations. But what was reported to the UN in 2022 by Mali? Back in 2022, when France withdrew its Barkhane forces from Mali, tensions between Bamako and Paris remained high. Mali escalated its concerns to the United Nations with its foreign ministry sending a letter to the UN Security Council accusing France of aiding jihadists within Mali and breaching its airspace. Note that the letter used candid and blunt words like aiding jihadists, which is something no country had earlier said in formal letters. Furthermore, the letter alleged the possession of several pieces of evidence demonstrating France's unauthorized entries into Malian airspace 
for the benefit of terrorist groups, including the dropping of weapons and ammunition. This is literally unbelievable. Mali has proof that France was witnessed helping terrorists directly. However, the United Nations did nothing and turned a blind eye to the matter. The letter pointed to approximately 50 incidents of repetitive and frequent violations of Malian airspace by French forces since the beginning of 2022. Drones, helicopters, and fighter planes were claimed to have flown over Mali without authorization from Bamako. Regarding the accusations of espionage, Diop's letter accused the French of engaging in spying activities, including the dropping of packages by the French army on August 8. The Malian army asserted that covert overflights occurred after an attack on the Tesset camp, indicating an uncoordinated breach of airspace. According to Diop, this evidence suggested that terrorist groups, particularly the Sahelian branch of the Islamic State group, received significant external support and expertise. This support meant weapons sufficient to continue the insurgency in Mali, so it could pave a war for France to stay in Mali. You should know that this was not the first time Mali accused France of violating its airspace. Similar claims emerged in April following the discovery of bodies from a mass grave in Gossi, which were returned to Malian forces. During that incident, Mali accused French soldiers, while France implicated Mali and Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group. France denied any violations of airspace, dismissing the allegations as disinformation. In his letter, Diop urged an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council and warned of Mali's right to self-defense if such activities persist, potentially undermining the country's stability and security. Earlier in September 2022, France was also lashed by Mali on the same issue. The then Malian Prime Minister Abdoulaye Maiga said that Paris had stabbed Mali in the back. The relationship between France and Mali's military government, which took control in 2020 and postponed elections until 2024, deteriorated rapidly, leading Mali to seek assistance from Russian mercenaries. He challenged France to transcend its colonial history, accusing the French government of adopting neo-colonial, condescending, paternalistic, and revanchist policies that, he believed, had provoked strong sentiments among Africans striving to uphold their dignity. Furthermore, Maiga also criticized UN Secretary General Guterres for his comments on a dispute between Mali and the Ivory Coast concerning detained Ivorian soldiers. Dismissing Guterres's involvement, Maiga warned of potential legal consequences and called for reforms within the UN peacekeeping force in Mali. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. This situation isn't entirely new. In 2021, similar claims were made. The then Prime Minister Maiga stated that French troops had established an enclave in northern Mali, which was handed over to the terrorist group Ansar al-Din. He alleged that France had been training these terrorist groups operating in Mali. Maiga also claimed that the groups had come from Libya. The conflict in Mali dates back to 2013, when France intervened after armed rebels took control of the northern part of the country. Despite the presence of French troops in the region, violence expanded into central Mali and neighboring Burkina Faso and Niger. The situation led to a significant loss of life, displacement of people, and a lack of state presence in various parts of Mali. These claims were not just allegations because no country could write a proper letter to the United Nations Security Council without having sufficient proof. However, despite having proof against France of serious claims of sponsoring terrorists, the United Nations did nothing. Now, let's try to think what would have happened if there was some other country instead of France. Let's change France and Mali's position to understand it better. If France had written a letter to the UN saying that it had proof that Mali had sponsored terrorists, then the UN would have given a green signal to NATO and the UN security mission to attack Mali. Everyone knows that this is the way things would have turned out. However, as Mali is not a Western country that does not have a private lapdog like the United Nations, nothing is being done against France. Since the UN did nothing against France, not even carrying out an investigation, Mali felt that the UN peacemaking mission should be kicked out. Hence, Mali's foreign minister urged the United Nations Security Council to promptly withdraw the peacekeeping mission from the country, citing its failure to effectively tackle security challenges. Not only that, but the underlying reason was the United Nations' inability to question France on sponsoring terrorism in Mali. Foreign Minister Abdoulaye Diop emphasized, the government of Mali demands the immediate withdrawal of MINUSMA, 
referring to the United Nations force in Mali. Diop highlighted, Minusma appears to have become part of the problem by exacerbating community tensions, fueled by extremely serious allegations that severely undermine peace, reconciliation, and national unity in Mali. In January, UN Chief Antonio Guterres presented three options for adjusting the mission, including augmenting personnel or a complete troop withdrawal. In a report released later, he recommended an intermediate solution to reconfigure the mission, focusing on a limited number of priorities. After the Security Council meeting, Minusma's head stressed the importance of host country consent for UN peacekeeping operations. It's a decision that the Council has to make, stated El Ghassim Wayne, underlining that peacekeeping operations hinge on the principle of consent from the host country, without which operations become significantly challenging. While some countries, including France, the United States, and Britain, stressed the significance of MINUSMA, others like Russia insisted that any proposals should align with the host country's opinion. The Russian ambassador underscored the critical role of the Malian government in combating terrorism, which he noted was not explicitly stated in the Blue Helmet's mandate. Not only the UN security mission, but Mali also asked French troops to leave the country. You should know that in its early phases, Operation Barkhane was initially hailed as a triumph. Leveraging advanced air and ground technologies, the French forces effectively ousted militants from critical strongholds. But perhaps this was to create a first impression that French troops were worth keeping in Mali. Hence, with support from European allies, France extended its presence throughout the Sahel, establishing permanent bases in Nijamina, Chad, and Niamey, Niger. In 2017, France, in collaboration with Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, Mauritania, and Chad, initiated the G5 Sahel Force, a counterterrorism unit consisting of 5,000 troops. Despite an expanded mandate to operate across borders, these efforts ultimately failed to secure local backing. The significant number of civilian casualties and accusations of human rights violations by security forces dealt a severe blow to regional and national initiatives. The failure to achieve its intended objectives was attributed to a blend of structural deficiencies, tactical missteps, and notably, a misinterpretation of the dynamics of the local conflicts. Consequently, the French operations in the region came to be compared to President Emmanuel Macron's interpretation of the Afghan conflict. Later, anti-French sentiment in the Sahel reached unprecedented levels, primarily due to France's failure to address the security crisis. Street demonstrations became a regular occurrence, and the coups in August 2020 and May 2021 in Mali ousted leaders who were, to some extent, cooperating with French enterprises. But how is the funding of terrorists done in West Africa? FATF, the Financial Action Task Force, issued a report that tells a lot about how that is done. The Intergovernmental Action Group Against Money Laundering in West Africa and the Financial Action Task Force joined energies for a research project focusing on typologies aimed at uncovering the various methods used by terrorists, terrorist groups, and their supporters in West Africa to raise, transfer, and utilize funds. The project team gathered data from experts stationed in five West African countries recognized for experiencing significant and frequent terrorism-related incidents. These countries were Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, and Senegal. The report found a number of ways terrorists got funding. Out of them, financing terrorism through non-governmental organizations, charitable institutions, and levies, and through the illicit smuggling of arms, assets, and currencies using cash couriers stand on the top. Not only that, but this makes it clear that France has been involved in financing terrorists. That's because most NGOs in Africa have roots in France. This hints toward a serious threat that NGOs could be involved in financing terrorists indirectly, demanding the need for their accountability. But despite getting funding, getting weapons and ammunition is not easy. It's because there are no private weapon factories in African countries that could sell weapons to terrorists. One more thing, the weapons used by terrorists are made in the West. Now, unless the terrorists use online shopping platforms that give them weapons, it becomes clear that France provides them with weapons. This argument is coherent with what Mali's government said about France using its airspaces illegally. French airplanes enter Mali's territory and deliver weapon packages. Not only that, but as Mali's former prime minister said, French troops created a base for terrorists where they might have left enough weapons. Hence, the French troops in African countries do not wipe out terrorism. Rather, they are directed to support it and to fulfill the demands of the terrorists. 
It turns out that terrorism in every country might find its roots in France. Only investigation can lead us to know the truth, but this is being blocked by the United Nations. Mali has reminded the United Nations time and again about its claims, but nothing has been done. It becomes clear that the reason Mali is not being criticized for blaming France is evidence that France is deeply involved. To not make the matter go public, the United Nations is staying silent, as it can comfortably do without complaining. The reason why terrorism never ended in West African countries is because France never wanted it to end. If terrorists were wiped out, there would be no reason for France to stay and exploit resources. That's why we saw protests against French troops' anti-jihadist operations. The local population struggles to comprehend why the terrorist attacks persist, despite the extensive resources available to the French forces. Well, now every person in Africa knows why French operations against terrorists failed. It was because France never wanted to end terrorism in the first place. Mali has become the first country to approach this matter properly, writing a letter to the United Nations and later exposing everything in the General Assembly. Perhaps now, after knowing the reason why terrorism could never end in Africa, other African countries would also like to write letters to the United Nations. If Mali alone cannot force the United Nations to take action against France, perhaps all African countries together can demand the UN to do what it is supposed to do. This pressure can bring the UN back on track to becoming an international organization which has to be neutral. In the opposite scenario, if the UN does nothing, this can lead us to see that no matter what happens, the UN will be a Western lapdog working only for the West. No matter what happens, these actions are making it clear for the rest of the world to see whom to trust and whom not to. What do you think? Will the UN ever take action against the powerful Western countries which are breaking international laws? What should be done with France so it never sponsors terrorism in developing African countries, something that should be a crime? Let us know your thoughts on whether you knew about France's face before. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Next video.